Some new faces. Are you going to you and you? What's your name? Yunus. Were you here in the last program? Yeah. Were you? Yeah, I was here. Here? Oh, yes, you got there. I can't remember those faces. <laughs> right? Inshallah, today we will see. how we can achieve everything in the world, everything. You need to understand what it means, okay? Last time we discussed that Allah Ta'ala had created everything for us, for the humans. Everything means? Um, every, every, everything. Uh, every single thing. Every single thing. The skies, the earth, the ocean, the fishes, the birds, the animals, the trees and the fruits and the vegetables. Everything, <coughs> everything is for us in order to benefit from all these things. Who's going to benefit? Us. The humans, we are benefiting from the animals. Animals, everything as well. We are benefiting from everything. We don't know how, but we are. But, Allah Ta'ala says, that is his meaning, Allah Ta'ala did not create anything without a purpose. Everything has its purpose, why it has been created for. For example, imagine I have a phone and the, the phone does not function properly. The phone does not function properly, does not do its job, doesn't do proper it work properly. Will I keep it with me? Will I keep it with me? Yeah, no. No, I won't keep it with me. It doesn't work. I would think how can I repair it? If it is repairable, I will take it to the shop to repair it and use it. If it can't be repaired, then where is it going to go to? In the bin. It's of no use. It's of no use. So, the purpose of the phone is for one 
can use it to call somebody from anywhere. Nowadays, even more than that, we can watch news as well. Everything we can listen to bayans from the phone as well. Yeah. We can learn a lot from the phone using the phone. Many things. We can even have a dictionaries on the phone. Many things. Yeah. If the same phone does not do its work, then it's of no use. Similarly, Allah Ta'ala has created everything for a purpose. As long as everything is fulfilling the purpose of its being created, then fine. If it does not do its work properly, then nobody will keep it. Nobody. Anything and everything is like that. But the humans are special. Humans are special. Because unlike all the other creations, because other creations do not have paradise, do not be given Jahannam, no. Humans and the jinns, yes. They have to answer to the question, they have to be through, they have to pass through the judgment day. If they don't good, good for them. If they did not do good, unfortunate ones. So, apart from all the other creations, humans and jinns <coughs> are unique and special. So we are humans. So Allah Ta'ala told us, okay, come. Enjoy everything I have created for you. Enjoy everything. You do enjoy. From the water, that if one doesn't get water, he knows how difficult it is. Maybe you've heard just a couple of months ago in Somalia what happened? There was a big drought. Yeah? Oh, yes. So. In London, but not as bad as in Somalia, even in many other places as well. But Somalia was a very, very big drought. What happened? It was like, like you and I, people like you and I, passed away, died. How many? 50,000 people passed away. Rough estimate. More than that. Why? No water. No water. <coughs> <coughs> Even from the water Allah Ta'ala has created for us in order to benefit from it. But Allah Ta'ala says you benefit from everything but at the same time don't forget me. Do not forget me. I have created everything for you but you I want you to do what I want you to do. Nothing else. <coughs> if you don't do it you can still benefit from there. But in the, day, in the day you have to come to me for judgment, I will grab you. Because you utilize everything I created for you, but at the same time, I had created you for me, to worship me, to listen to me, to obey me and my Rasul, وسلم, you failed. Because you failed, now it's going to be difficult for you. So, we all create, we all here in this world, of course we have to go to school, we have to study, we have to get good degrees, but with that we have to also learn what Allah Ta'ala says. We have to learn about Islam, we have to learn how Allah Ta'ala is telling us to live our life. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So for that, we have to go to Madrasa in the evening. When we go, we have to make sure we learn everything that they are teaching us. Yes, on a daily basis, five days a week, maybe six days a week, maybe two days a week, depending on your condition, you have to learn. If you don't learn, then small story to tell you. There was a king. He was very rich, of course, king is king. 
and he had a unique servant. Yeah. He loved that servant more than all the other servants. Servant here means those ministers that they are under him to give him advice, everything. Of course they are his servants. So only one was so close to the king. And the other ones, they are jealous. Why is he so close to him? Why the king loves him more than us? Why is that so? We are also his ministers. We are also listening to him. We also do what he wants us to do. So why is that he, is, he likes this minister more, this servant more than us? So now the king found out about this. Right, he wanted to prove to everybody why he, he liked this particular person. What he did, one day he called everybody, invited every minister, God, come around. Everybody has given their good chair, everybody is waiting for the order of the king. And the king, he ordered to be brought in front of him a very, very precious pearl. What's a pearl, right? Yeah. Pearl. Rubies, for example. Something. Very ex exceptional. There's only one exists in the world like them. So, because he's a king, he had it. So big. And he said, Put it down. So the person came and put it down. And he said, Bring your hammer with you as well. The hammer is there, give it. So, it's okay, you can go. So, the person brought everything, he left everything, and he went. Now, he's addressing to the ministers. You Break this pearl, break this ruby. He got up, he went near there. I think, I think the king is testing me whether I'm stupid or not. Whether I'm stupid or not, he's testing me. And then he tells the king, he's so precious, he's, we can't find it anywhere. This is only one unique in the world. So the king said, oh, okay, no problem, you can go. He went to his place, second one. He comes here, he thinks again for a while. King is telling me to break it and but I don't know whether he's testing me. I'm a stupid or I'm a mental or what. So now king, it's so special, I can't do it, it's so expensive. So okay, then go. So like this, everybody came and they didn't even break and they went back to the place. And you know that that servant that he likes more, he told him, you won't break it. He went there, he picked the hammer, bam, he broke it on go. And all the other ministers, they were staring at him. Boy, oh, are you stupid? Are you mental? The king is testing us. You went and broke it. Look, it's, it's precious and you can't have it anymore. It's broken. Okay. All the ministers, they had whatever they had to say, they said it and now the king is addressing them. You see why I like him more? Everybody's thinking, hey, he's doing something stupid and the king is saying that's why he likes him. He said, no, it's not because of that. I like him because he did not think what that thing is. He only thought it is the order of the king. What? He thought, no, this the is king. the order of the king. He doesn't bother. He doesn't mind. Whatever the, it is, it's the order of the king is more valuable than the precious rubies. So he gave more value to the order of the king than the stone which is in front of you. So the king said to everybody, that's why I like him more. Because he values my order than whatever is in front of him. Understand? So similarly, if everything Allah Ta'ala has created, we use it the way Allah Ta'ala tells us to use. Yeah? If He's telling us, look, okay, you have game to play, but look, it's time to pray namaz. Leave everything, go and pray namaz. Then pause off it if you have to, go and pray namaz. Allah Ta'ala likes that. 
that this is little he, he's, he talks to the angels oh, proud look look at my servant look it's time for namaz he left everything on the side and he went to pray namaz he came to worship me you be witness of forgiving so allah ta'ala is so proud of us when we obey him on the other side Prophet sallallahu is there is there mashallah they passed away, they left this world, but their body is still there as they were alive because Allah Ta'ala had forbidden the earth to decompose the, the body of the prophets and also the shaheed who are in the path of Allah and so on. So, so his body is still there. You understand? If you go to Medina and you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rasulullah, maybe we can't hear him reply, but he replies. Maybe we can't hear him. There are some great saints. They go there and they say, and Prophet replies back, and they can even hear that as well. Understand? So, when we do good things like this, then Prophet has been informed. Look, one of your ummati, one of your people of community, they worship me. They are okay. They listen to my order. They pray. He also, he's also happy because that's what he's, he has come to this world for. He wanted to make sure all his people, the community of Ummah Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, obey him and make Allah happy. So because it's happening, because somebody has done that, so when the information is given to him, he's, he gets happy. Do you understand? Another thing, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also makes dua to the, for that person who sends blessing upon him. Who sends blessing, blessing upon him. What does that mean, blessing? Um. What does that mean? Sending salutation upon him. I'm sure those they are not behind, but let's see whether you can answer. What does that mean? Sending blessing upon Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Exact salutation means what can you do? Um, uh, Say again. Ask him the one. Not really. But pray. We just send durood or salat and salat. We say salat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We can say that very simple or sallallahu ta'ala ala nabi al ummi. Or we can also read the durood Ibrahim. Who knows what durood Ibrahim? must have learned what we read in the Tahiyyat. Allahumma salli. Allahumma salli. Ala Muhammad. Ala Muhammad. Wa ala Ali Muhammad. Kama salli'ta. Ala Ibrahim. Wa ala Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidu majid. In the other version, this is my neck hamidu majid here. Allahumma barik. Ala Muhammad. Wa ala Muhammad. Kama barakta. Ala Ibrahim. Wa ala Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidu majid. Can I also read this? Remember last time we were there, we discussed about it. Yeah? When we send a salutation upon Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes dua for us. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes dua for us. Now remember, do you think his dua will be refused? Mm -hmm. No way. If he makes dua for us, Allah Ta'ala will definitely accept it. Definitely. It's great. Sometimes we ask for ourselves, we don't know whether our dua is accepted or not. But we can go indirectly. Yeah? We send salutation upon Rasulullah, he makes dua for us, Allah accepts straight away. The job is done. Yeah? You understand? Sometimes we want something to be done, when you go straight away, it doesn't happen. What do we do? We go to such a person who knows that person, we talk to him. So that person, he goes, sort his, sort his work out. Next minute, it's done. Next minute, it's done. So similarly, we go bypass. Yeah, so Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we reach Allah Ta'ala. That's the only way we can, we can only go through Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, another thing. At the same time, like we discussed before, that 
if we don't keep our parents happy, then Allah Ta'ala is unhappy. If we don't keep our parents happy, then Allah Ta'ala is not happy with us. So then it's going to be difficult. Because he's already angry. He's already angry. Then it's going to be difficult. So at the same time, we have to also get our parents' dua as well. Our parents' dua. Now, when can we get our parents' dua? When you don't listen to them, is it? When you don't listen to them, your parents will make dua for you. Do you think so? Do you think so? No, isn't it? So if you don't listen to your parents, they will make dua for you. They'll be unhappy with you. So if you listen to them, then they are going to be happy with you. Then they make dua for you. And then Allah is also happy with you. So you see, everything is combined. Understand? So, then, what happens? Allah Ta'ala becomes slowly, slowly, slowly like this. You carry on every day. You make sure you don't make your parents happy. You always send a salutation upon Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You don't hurt anybody. Mashallah, you read Quran, you pray namaz all the time, everything. You don't delay namaz. You don't delay namaz. See? The ayah I read in Arayat al-Ladi, Fawailul lil-Musallin, Allah says, Go upon those prayers. Prayers mean those who pray namaz. I'm talking about namaz, I'm talking about those people who pray namaz. Hey, why is that? Why is a great loss for them? They pray namaz. Allah explains why. Some people just quickly wash it. That's also one of the reasons why. They don't do their ruku properly, they don't do their sajda properly. They just like, 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 it's not good. You have to give time for each position in namaz, you understand? So that's also another reason, very good. So, the reason here, Alta says, because they were lazy in praying. They prayed, but lazy, lazy, meaning, one meaning to that is sleepy. Huh? Sleepy. Mm. Yes. No, they do pray, but they're being lazy in praying. They it don't want to do. Right. Mm. Can't be they do, but rush. Rush. That's the way he said it. One more thing. Um, they want to. No, here lazy means. What they do is, they delay to the last moment of Namaz. We can pray Zohar till Asr time, right? We can pray Zohar Namaz till Asr time. Yeah, that's time for Zohar, of course. But knowingly, Zohar started just being lazy. Let's pray last moment. Just before Asr, let's pray. Let's pray Namaz just before Asr. Maybe, but that's not good intention though. Because in the hadith, Prophet says, we should pray our namaz in the first time. As, as soon as namaz time has come, we should pray. We should pray. That has a great benefit. So, if you do all that, what happens? Then Allah becomes ours. Allah, Allah becomes become ours. ours. Now come back to the story. Like that servant, he chose the king. He chose the king. the king. So he obeyed his order, everything. So the king has become his. So now imagine the servant asks anything from the king. The king says, Go on, have it. Go on, no problem. Because, because he, king he is he the servant now. Because he listens to him. Yes. So similarly, if we make Allah ours, then everything which belongs to Allah is also ours. Us. Yeah? Everything belongs to Allah, isn't it? And what happens is, everything will be yours. How? You will see that many, many stories. I'm not going to mention everything in our time. One small incident, okay?
He was a great saint known Ibrahim ibn Adam. Ibrahim ibn Adam, the great saint of Allah. He had sacrificed his kingdom. He left everything he went for Allah. Then what happens? Allah Ta'ala had become his meaning. Anything he wanted, Allah Ta'ala fulfilled it. Because he made Allah Ta'ala happy. So once was going past by an ocean, okay, ocean sea. So there was somebody with him and all of a sudden that person's needle fell in the ocean. Now this, this person, for whatever the reason he used for, he didn't have anything else, he couldn't find it. Of course you can't find it in the ocean, it's difficult once it's fell in, it's so difficult to look for it. Then he said, what's happened? Look, I've lost something. So Ibrahim Adam goes, no, don't worry. Then he just looked, he just spoke to the fish. A fish came, many fishes brought some kind of needle, whatever they found in the ocean. He says, is this one? No, this one. He says, no. Oh yeah, this is the one. So he, he took it from the fish, he gave it to him. What happened? Even the fishes listened to him. Even the fishes listened listen to him. His order, because Everything is Allah's. He made Allah His. Everything He listens to Him. You understand? There are many incidents. Once in a forest, a group of people going. Why? Because they were going to propagate Islam for Allah, to please Allah, to make Allah happy. They were going to call the people towards Islam. They were going. So, because they are going for Allah, Allah Ta'ala is in their, to, at their service. So, Allah Ta'ala knows best. They got lost in the forest. So, what happened? Once Amir, the leader of the group, we discussed what should we do, what should we do, what should we do. Then, all of a sudden, the Amir went out. He's speaking to some, somebody. The group of people thinking, hey, that's weird. We know there's nobody in the forest except us. Who is he talking to? And after some time, the Amir came back and said, Right, everybody pack away, let's go. So what's happening? And they have listened to the leader. They packed away everything, let's go. Going. They're seeing a big lion in front of them. What? A lion? What's happening? They're seeing the lion is taking them to the destination that they have to go to. Showing the path, the Amir spoke to the lion. Look, we are lost here. We need to go to such a place for the, for the propagation of Islam. Now we need to do something for us. We don't know the route. I know the route. So Amir spoke to the lion. So he arranged. So the lion is showing them the route, and they are on the way. So that's what happens if we listen to Allah and we make Allah ours. Then everything is ours. Everything is ours. Whenever we need it, it will be there for us. But for that, what should we do first? We have to do what Allah orders. Do you know Allah, our parents tell us to do, we should do that and then Allah will be happy and then the things that if they're like he told us now because that's a boy lost the pin and then he he um, th th then he talked to him I lost something and then the, his sword looked down in the face the water and he saw the fish he told that this boy has lost and then he obeyed and then said um, not this one not this one this one is that so, how can we get our parents dua to help them and you be happy with them? G, you pray for your parents? Yeah. How can you get their dua? Make them happy? Yes? How? Yes? Do what pleases them. To what pleases them. Good. Salutation to That's to get Prophet Sassam Dua. Yeah? We get Rasulullah Sassam Dua through sending blessing to him. Right. We stop there, inshallah.
So we should practice from now, yes, from today. Okay? We should try to read as much as possible. Durood Sharif, Salat al Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We should pray namaz punctually. So listen to your parents, everything always. Yes. Um, do you know, like, if you don't have a watch and you play outside and then you're not sure what time is it? and then it's the right time to go to the Fajr and then you go to Fajr and pray and then after that you you do it whatever and then when the other time comes you do that too. So you can pray, you can eat, you can do some other work you like but when the time comes to listen to your parents, to pray namaz, everything paused. Leave everything, pray, then go. Yes? Will you do that? Who will do that? Yes, inshallah. Okay? Okay, yes. Stop anyway. Oh, no.